back again with the infamous notes. Um, I wanted to expand on my UFO videos a little bit. Uh, I actually did, there's a three part video right now. I'm thinking YouTube recently blessed me with the ability to upload videos that are longer than 15 minutes. So I'm thinking of actually uh, re downloading those and then combining them all into one video and then reposting them. But uh, there's something else I wanted to get off my chest first. Uh, as I'm sure you all know by now, I'm actually a huge fan of uh, scientists, not only uh, Dr. Misha Kaku, but also uh, more recently Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, someone who uh, I'm a huge fan of. I've been reading their books lately. I think these, these are just really awesome guys. But they both say something that, that kind of bugs me, and it's, it's, it's really sort of a pet peeve of mine because I happen to be um, you know, very curious about the natural world. And both of these guys, when talking about... Uh, alien intelligence, alien civilizations. The analogy they always make as to why we haven't been visited yet is that, well, if you walk by a worm or an anthill, you stop to think, what are they thinking? Do you say, take me to your leader, I hear, you know, I'll give you nuclear technology, whatever. Granted, that's an unrealistic, unreal expectation, but the thing they're ignoring is we happen to know quite a bit about worms. We know quite a bit about ants, different species of each, and how they work. So, at some point, some human was walking by the ants and the worms and was like, wow, I wonder what's going on with these little guys. I want to, you know, find out. And so, they, uh, they, they did their little thing, you know, more than likely they plucked a few worms out of the ground, took them off to the lab, and did the same thing with the ants. I mean, who hasn't had an ant farm as a kid? I mean, we have a natural, driven curiosity. <clears throat> Granted... I'm not expecting aliens to land on the White House lawn and want to start diplomatic relations or anything. But personally, I think it's inevitable that some scientifically minded intelligent species is, with technology, is going to fly by Earth, take a look down, see us wandering around, and they're going to be curious enough about us that they're going to want to know more about us and how we work. Has that happened yet? Uh, personally, I believe that we have been visited by unmanned craft, probes of some kind. Uh, I mean, think about it. What's the first thing we did? <coughs> we, as in the human species, I don't mean, you know, you mean, but we, the human species, the first thing we did was send up, you know, unmanned spacecraft. Sputnik, you know, was just a mechanical probe that went up and just, you know, did a few orbits of the Earth. And there's a reason we did that, and it's because we didn't really know for sure what would happen to us once we got up into space. So, we send a probe. Okay, well, here's Earth. Alien species living on a planet that's not Earth. Okay, Earth might be hostile. They don't know. I mean, there's only one way they're going to find out, and that's to come and check it out. Well, what's the best way to check it out? You send a probe. You send a mechanical, you know, probe. You don't just, you know, I can imagine maybe there's an alien species that's so callous and says, hey, Bob, you know, go to that planet, and if you don't die, come back and tell us what it's like, you know. I mean, okay, maybe there's a species that's that callous, but quite frankly, it's really inefficient, because if a guy goes and he dies, you're not going to know until, you know, I don't know, Bob's two weeks overdue, I guess he's dead. Um, Jim, you're next. <clears throat> Find out what happened to Bob, will you? Well, I mean, <laughs> that's really inefficient, because you're not going to know what killed them. You know, they can't, they're not going to rise up from the ghost, like, I, I was killed by oxygen, you know, or whatever the case may be. So, I think any UFO encounter that we may have, have had up until now has been that kind. Please, I've gone through this, I made, I made this mistake a couple years ago. Uh, please do not send me your UFO videos, do not send me your alien abduction stories. I don't want to hear them, okay? I don't want to see them. I've seen so much Photoshop garbage on YouTube, it is ridiculous. Um, even some videos that I think are, are like genuine, you don't know what the fuck it is. Then you turn around and say, hey, look, proof that UFOs are exist. You know, that's my favorite tagline. Uh, remember, UFO stands for Unidentified Flying Object. Okay? I got I got a link sent to me, you know, something like, Air Force finally admits they track hundreds of UFOs every year. No shit. Okay? All it means is they saw something flying in the sky. They didn't know what it was, so they called it a UFO. In fact, they run on these things so often, they have their own special word for it. It's called bogey. Okay? There's the technical definition of uh, aircraft of unknown origin or intent, but that's just a fancy way of saying UFO. And the reason I brought up the alien abduction stories was like I was saying about the worm, you know, being plucked out of the ground and taken off to the laboratory. If you were abducted by aliens, uh, don't tell me, 
Okay? Well, you can't tell me because you got plucked off of Earth and taken to the alien laboratory. Okay? They didn't send you back. Right? I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't. Okay? You're here. You're still... There's no reason for them to send you back. I mean, what are we going to do? You know? Right back to the... Hey! Bring that human back! You know? What are we going to do? Go after him? It takes 20,000 years for us to get to the nearest star. Be a little late by then. You know? Be a tiny bit too long. So, do me a favor. Don't send me any of that crap. I'm not interested. It's just, it's, it's baloney. Um, anyway, before I distracted myself. Um, we have this thing called SETI. Uh, it's actually in my hometown, Mountain View, California. Um, and I really want to give props to Judy Foster. I think it was, it was super awesome of her to make this huge donation. It was 200 grand. Uh, I think by the end of this month, the Allen Telescope Array will be back up and running. We'll be searching for alien intelligence. But I've got a question for, for SETI. Okay, say we finally find that, that, that golden positive signal. Okay, we get the signal from aliens. Yay! It's aliens! It's alien intelligence is coming from that way, or whatever. How the fuck are we going to know what they're saying? Okay? And for that matter, if we don't know what they're saying, how the fuck are we going to know that it's an intelligent language? This has been kind of something that I've been, been kicking around for a while. I mean, especially, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, Star Wars fan as well. Um, and this is more a criticism of Star Trek than it is of Star Wars. Uh, primarily because Star Wars uh, is actually is the civilization encompasses the entire galaxy. So all the intelligent species have been co-mingling for a while. So it, it's, um, it's far more plausible to believe <coughs> that alien species would be able to understand one another's language because they've been you know, together for that long. Star Trek, on the other hand, they run into a brand new, uh, brand new species that they, they've never seen before, never heard from before. And lo and behold, this species speaks English. Holy cow! Well... Eat. No, not going to happen. Okay, I find it very hard to believe that any alien species is going to be able to speak English. Uh, even the Transformers route, Michael Bay, was like, well, you know, they just watched our internet for a while and they managed to figure our language out. Okay, maybe, but quite, quite frankly, I think the odds of that are, are slim. I mean, you, you're kind of making a leap of faith that just because they're, they're that technologically advanced, that they're going to automatically know everything there is to know, or they're going to just have the ability to figure out everything there is to know about us with very little or any effort at all. And quite frankly, I had a problem with that too because not so long ago, I think back in the 1800s, I just looked it up and I already forgot. It's crazy. But uh, anybody heard of the, the Rosetta Stone? It's Right now it's being used for this, this language learning software. You can learn a new language. But the Rosetta Stone was actually a stone that was discovered somewhere in, uh, in Egypt. And it had three different languages on it. <coughs> One of the languages were uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics, which we had no fucking clue how to read. Which is weird, because it's a human-derived language. And for about 3,000 years, it was the dominant language of uh, Northern Africa and, and part of the Middle East. But we had no idea how to read it, <clears throat> because no one had spoken it or read it for so long, we'd all forgotten. And none of us knew the original mechanics behind how it was created. So we got Egyptian hieroglyphics, and then we have Greek, which we didn't know how to read. It was one of those languages that had managed to survive. So using Greek, we just kind of uh, looked at the, the frequency of symbols, we looked at the variety of the symbols of the Egyptian hieroglyphics, uh, tried to find repeating patterns. We found that there's a string of, of uh, uh, symbols in the hieroglyphics, and there was a name that was being repeated over and over again in Greek. And so we, well not we, the person who was studying it, I can't remember his name, it's really embarrassing. I just looked this up like a week ago, I think. I should remember all this. But anyway, all I remember is that he, he assumed that the string of hieroglyphics was the, the name of this, this king, and then he kind of used that to figure out the rest of it. And uh, lo and behold, ta-da, we figured out how to speak uh, hieroglyphics. But uh, aliens aren't going to have a Rosetta Stone to go from, you know, Klingon to English or whatever it is. Uh, so, I mean, they're not going to have that key. So it's going to be much, much more difficult for them to figure out our language, even though they have, I'm sure they have the technological capacity to study or analyze our language in ways that we can't think of, but it doesn't automatically mean, they still got to have the brain power in there, and it's, sure, it's possible, but I still think it's, it's, it's a bit more of a leap of faith. I mean, look how much trouble we had trying to decipher our own dead languages. I mean, we're still getting it wrong. The biblical scholars are still figuring out things in the Bible that were, were translated wrong. I mean, we've been studying this thing for a century, they still haven't gotten it right yet. So it's not that easy. Um, it's easy to believe that it's that easy, but it's not. So, uh, 
I wrote a little cartoon to kind of imagine, you know, if Seti did find this little, this, uh, this, this, this alien signal, and this, you know, we decided to contact him and have the aliens visit, uh, unless we know what they're saying, uh, something like this is going to happen. This would be a bad time to find that out, okay? So it's really important that if we're going to be looking for alien signals, that we need to have some kind of means uh, of translating their language, especially if we're going to have any hope of even contacting them. And quite frankly, I think it's only a matter of time. Um, I mean, <clears throat> it would be awesome if some alien probe goes flying into orbit and, like, you know, passes by the ISS and they're like, hey, it's an alien probe, you know? It'd be awesome, but, the, you know, I mean, the odds of it happening, like, anytime soon are unfortunately kind of slim, but as more and more time goes on, as our detection equipment gets better, as we spend more and more time in space, the probability is going to go up and up and up and up and up, and I think given enough time, um, maybe, I don't know necessarily within my lifetime, but soon we're going to run into an alien signal. And so that's what this, this signal, this particular video is all about, uh, despite my haphazard uh, about things about. So anyway, I had kind of an idea that I wanted to share with you about what's going to happen how are we going to talk to these uh, these aliens should we finally do get the golden uh, signal? And I think the first place we should start is actually trying to talk to dolphins. <clears throat> now think about it. Dolphins are possibly a uh, intelligent species, um, as intelligent as we are. Uh, so far as we can tell, they're certainly more intelligent than just about any other, mam any other mammal we put them up against. Maybe, maybe on par with primates, but I've I personally believe, just through, through the research that I've done, I personally believe that dolphins are a little bit smarter than primates. Um, but I'm not the expert, so I can't really I can't really say it for certain. But that's just my own personal belief. But uh, so, what does talking to dolphins have? I mean, you know, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you just said the aliens aren't going to speak English. What makes you think they're going to speak dolphin? Well, they're not going to speak dolphin either. I mean, they're going to speak English. They're going to speak Chinese. They're going to speak dolphin. They're going to speak, you know, chimpanzee. But what we need is a proven process to develop for um, analyzing and translating a language that is not human-derived. That's, that's the importance there. Uh, dolphins have a language that is not human-derived. Not only that, but their methods of making noise are completely different from us. Okay, And that is how they parallel an alien intelligent species. An alien intelligent species isn't going to evolve the same way we are. They may not even be bipedal. Um, I mean, you can make a case as to why they, they most likely will be. But they may not be. They may be quadrupedal, uh, and then you know their their forepaws may also be like manipulators of some kind, so they can still have technology. And they may talk. They may have a muzzle like a dog, so they're not going to make the same kind of sounds we are. So we can't just use the same kind of translating techniques for human languages. It's just not going to work, okay? Um, and this is proven when we tried to talk to dolphins. When we finally figured out that dolphins actually have some kind of a language. Uh, then we tried to translate it using the normal methods, and we absolutely failed on every attempt. We, we, can't, we can't say two words in dolphin. We can't say hi. So, I mean, think about it. Dolphins evolved here on Earth, uh, almost parallel to, to human beings. I mean, they've actually been around for quite a bit longer, I think 39 million years, whereas we've been around for, it's estimated around seven. So they've been around almost four times longer. They have a completely different means of communication, and... Uh, they have, along with all that, they have a language. I mean, they have a way of communicating with each other. And we've seen snippets of this in the wild. Uh, there was a, a case off of Australia where a dolphin was being bullied by other dolphins. Uh, after the bullying left, the dolphin left. When the bullying ended, the dolphin left. Then came back with two of his friends, and they beat the crap out of the two dolphins that were bullying the one guy. So there was some kind of communication going on. This dolphin swam off and said, hey, these guys were bullying me. You know, follow me and let's go kick their butt. And so they did. Sound familiar? You know, it's kind of something that happens when, in our high schools and our colleges. And I dare say even our sports teams. Um, another uh, example is a dolphin named Kelly. This is at the Missouri Science Institute. Kelly is, is like crazy. I could totally identify with this particular dolphin. Uh, at the Missouri Science Institute, they trained the dolphins to pick up litter of trash that had floated into the tanks. And as a reward for, for bringing the trainer a piece of trash, they would toss the dolphin a fish. Well, Kelly figured out that it didn't matter how big the piece of trash was. Just as long as you gave him a piece of trash, you got a fish. So what she did was she grabbed a piece of paper, 
uh, stuck it under a rock at the bottom of the tank, in like a hidden corner of the tank, and then waited for the trainers to show up. When the trainers did, she tore off a piece of the paper, swam up, got a fish, went back down, got another piece of the paper, swam up, got a fish, swam back down, got another piece of the paper, swam up, got a fish. She's exploiting the system. Sound familiar? That's something we do, okay? So, I mean, there is definitely a measurable amount of intelligence here to dolphins. Um, and learning to talk to them, not only does it give us a, a leg up when we finally do get that, that golden alien signal from SETI, but uh, it also helps us understand what our own intelligence level is. See, right now, for intelligent species, we've got a sample size of one. Us, human beings. Okay? That makes us a really shitty judge of what other alien species up there is going to be intelligent. There could be alien species that are just so far beyond our own intelligence we can't even tell. And there could be alien species that are, you know, on our own level. Yeah, that's the only way we're going to know. But if they're on our own level, we're never going to find them. Okay, at this point, it's going to take thousands of years. It'll take the invention of interstellar travel, okay, for us to detect alien species on our current technological level. So it's not going to happen. We need to be looking for people who are, we, or people, alien species that are either far more technologically advanced than we are, or just that much smarter. Well, if we use our, ourselves as the limit, as the cap, as we humans are so often wanting to do, as the standard, of what an intelligent species is, we're screwed. We are never going to find an alien species. It's just not going to fucking happen. We need to broaden our horizons of what makes a species intelligent. And that's, again, that's where the dolphins come in. As I mentioned, they're very smart animals. Um, and I've actually seen some of this firsthand. I mean, their, their communication skills. The video right now, uh, SeaWorld, the, the Believe, I think it's called uh, Believe Behind the Scenes. But if, if you look it up, uh, You'll find, just go through the, the SeaWorld videos. But uh, just look at the trainers and how they work behind the scenes <clears throat> closely with, with the killer whales, which, by the way, are the largest species of dolphin. We call them whales, but they're actually dolphins, which I always thought was kind of funny. Yeah, as they're working with, with these dolphins, I mean, these guys were, were the trainers and the guys and gals were just walking by a whale. But, okay, lift your tail, you know, okay, I need you to pee in a cup, and, and you know, all right, let's do this, and, you know, it's like, okay, go off, and, and you know, They'll, they'll just say, like, you know, do the such and such trick and the whale will, will swim off and do this complex series of actions and then come back. Only one command was needed for all of that. That was the first thing I noticed. And the second thing I noticed, the trainers weren't really repeating themselves. They would make a single gesture, they would say a single word, and bam, the dolphin, uh, the, the killer whale just picked it up right off the bat, knew exactly what to do, and performed the action flawlessly every single time. Find me another animal species on the planet where the trainer has that much ease, that close of communication with the animal. I, I challenge you to find another relationship like that. You won't find one. Okay? Even dog trainers. I mean, I've seen dog trainers all the time. They're constantly having to repeat themselves. Like, okay, here, you know, wave, you know, wave their hand and say words. And even then, it's only to get the dog to do, like, one action. Even on the obstacle course, the trainer has to follow the dog at each individual uh, obstacle and tell the dog what to do. With with the dolphin or killer whale, you could literally set up a series <coughs> a series of obstacles, and then you know say, okay, do this, do this, you know, train them to go through, and then later on in the day after you train them, say, all right, do the course, and the dolphin will do the course without you having to, to prompt them. Okay, that's fucking intelligent. So while we're on the topic of dolphin intelligence, there are some pretty far-reaching social implications that I want to address uh, in the same video, and they do kind of tie into each other, believe it or not. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But first of all, um, dolphins, should they prove to be an intelligent species, that now means that Earth is inhabited not by one intelligent species, but two. And we as human beings assign certain rights that are deserving of an intelligent species. We call them human rights. But, I mean, what reason do we have not to assign these rights to a dolphin, which is intelligent? It can think the same way we do, along kind of, uh, you know, a lot of the same kind of logical lines. So now we have to consider the social implications of the things that we're doing to our oceans, i.e. dumping trash, uh, sewage, fishing. Um, we now need to cooperate with the dolphins on this. I mean, it really, I mean, they deserve it. As an intelligent species, that is something that we're going to have to deal with. And that is going to, like, pretty much shatter everybody's perception of what the world is going to be like. And honestly, you know, 
It wouldn't be any different if suddenly aliens landed on the White House lawn. That is going to shatter our perceptions of what it is to be an intelligent species. Because we run the risk of, with aliens, them being, you know, more smart than we are. I mean, they're obviously going to be far more technologically advanced if they can travel through different solar systems. And so that, by itself, is going to be something we need to deal with. But finding out that dolphins are intelligent, uh, right here on Earth, and evolve along with us, that is something that is going to be just as impactful on our way of thinking, not just upon ourselves, but, uh, you know, basically life here on Earth, uh, sociology, philosophy, religion, all of that is just going to be, you know, overturned in ways, well, not overturned, but it's going to be uh, altered in ways that we can only just begin to imagine. Considering what we've been doing to our, the, our oceans, can you really blame the dolphins in this particular case? I mean, they might not be too happy with us right now, but that's okay because we can mend fences with them. The ability to communicate with them is, is really going to help us negotiate uh, certain kinds of things. Fishing, um, territorial rights, obviously the dolphins are going to are gonna need to be given some kind of sovereignty. Now, I'm not saying they should, be have, they should have a seat at the UN, but pretty darn close to it. I mean, we need to be in, in close ties with the dolphins. And not just for political reasons, either. Scientifically, there is so much we can learn from the dolphins. I mean, think about it. We don't know that much about the oceans. They live in the oceans. They see every day. They can go to depths and places of the oceans that we can't even dream of. If we can talk to the dolphins and work something out with them so that they can help us with the scientific research, they could completely blow open our knowledge of the earth, uh, climate change, uh, oceans, I mean, just about everything. And... They could be directly involved in that, such that, and not just, you know, we're giving them sensors and they're going down, but we can actually talk to them. Because they can, you know, if they're intelligent like we are, they can analyze, they can gather data, and they can actually, you know, we can share the data with them. They can, you know, talk it out amongst themselves, you know, if, if they're willing to, but they can talk it amongst themselves and see what kind of ideas are coming up. And we can talk it about it our, amongst ourselves. And, I mean, think about it. We've got a whole new set of brains to add to the problem, a whole new line of thinking that we can add to the, these problems that are plaguing us right now that we just don't have the solutions for. And they can help us, us working with them in such a way that we can now come up with solutions to these problems in, in ways that we never would have ever dreamed of finding on our own. So when you think of it that way, only good can come of that. So instead of being so selfish and thinking, oh my God, we're going to have to stop fishing, we're going to have to stop drilling for oil, we're going to have to doing this and blah, blah, blah. Let's, you know, think about, you know, oh, great, cool. We've got another intelligent species on the planet that we can work with, that we can cooperate with, that we can that we can join with to share ideas and we can, you know, I, I'm not sure, sure how we'd be able to develop technology, but definitely ideas and those are things that are very important. And the scientific knowledge that we could gather, I, I don't think there would be a limit. You've got two intelligent species on the planet studying the planet and how it works and using, uh, we develop the technology for them to use and they give us the ideas about some of the, the the data that we're gathering, what bad could come of that? I can't think of anything bad that could possibly come of that. And who knows, the dolphins may actually be a little bit more willing to work with us than, than we might think they are. I mean, we tend to reflect our own attitudes and our own ideas about how we think on to just about everything. And the dolphins, you know, they may not care so much about the fishing as long as we need enough for them. I mean, hell, they may even be able to, hey, if you go over here, you know, there's a whole bunch more of these other kind of fish right here. And who knows, we, they could even teach us how to fish sustainably. I mean, it, it's, it sounds absurd, I know. You know the, what could the human race possibly learn from a lower species? Dolphins are not a lower species, okay? If they are intelligent, then we have so much to learn from them. And we need to not be closed-minded to that. We need to be open-minded to that. And um, the same thing is true with aliens. I mean, think about it. Say an alien species does decide to want to talk to one of us for whatever reason. And, you know, like I said before, it's, it's going to be purely scientific curiosity. They're just going to, you know, want to get to know a little bit more about us, you know, write us back in a textbook, you know. Uh, Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy comes to mind. You know, Earth is harmless and then it's upgraded to mostly harmless. But, um, you know, hopefully they'll want to know a little bit more about us than that. And, and if that's the case, then hey, great. We need to be able to communicate with them and we need to, you know, not let our own hubris get in the way of an alien species just, who just wants to learn more about us and then we can be open to that. And we can learn from them. 
Because if we, if we can communicate with dolphins and learn from dolphins, then when an alien species comes by, we've already got the mindset. We're, we're ready to hear what they have to say, if they're willing to say anything at all. You know, I mean, I'm not saying they're going to want to, you know, okay, here's fusion technology, here's string theory, here's, you know, everything you've ever wanted to know. I'm not saying that. But if we can communicate with them, if we can, you know, show that we're friendly to them, they may be a little bit more open, you know, say, hey, this is an intelligent species. Um, let's talk to them, find out, you know, what makes them intelligent, let's find out what their level of intelligence is. And who knows, it may actually be a little bit of kind of bleeding over of knowledge. Um, chances are... They're going to be kind of like the Vulcans from, from the, the Enterprise, the last Star Trek movie, where they're going to be very tight-lipped about technology. They're going to want to really keep it to themselves. And seriously, who can, who can blame them? I mean, look at human history. Look at what we've done. I'm sure if, if once they figure out how to communicate with us, they'll be able to access all our databases, whether we like it or not. They're going to go back through human history and find out what we've done with technology, especially here in America. We, the number one thing we do with technology is blow shit up. You know? I mean, how are they going to feel about that? Probably not too good. I know I wouldn't. Uh, I don't feel too good about it. I'm human. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, once, once we get used to, to being able to co coexist with another intelligent species, should aliens land in the White House lawn, boom, we're ready. We know what to do. You know, we've, we've got a proven, A, we've got a proven process of how to translate their language because we've already translated one to similar language that humans can't speak. It wouldn't be all that much more, more different from from uh, aliens. Now granted, their language is going to be completely different, but the process of, of breaking down the sounds is going to be pretty much the same. We'll just have to plug in the kinds of sounds that they have, and the process that we learned uh, that, that taught us how to speak dolphin, it's going to teach us how to speak whatever alien race, and that's going to give us a leg up. Because remember, any alien race that comes here, they're not going to acknowledge us as intelligent. They're going to do what we do to, to, to dolphins and whales and tigers and worms and ants. They're just going to play traips around, like, yeah, whatever, you know, humans, okay, big deal. We've got to prove to them that we're intelligent. We can't just assume that they're going to come here and automatically want to talk just to us. I mean, they don't want anything to do with us. Let me show up and be like, oh, hey, look at these fish in the water. Let's go check them out. I mean, you never know. Who knows what is going to bring an alien here? Honestly, I highly doubt it's going to be our resources. we got a whole asteroid belt full of everything we have here on Earth. Um, so I strongly doubt they're going to want anything that we're using. Especially considering if they can fly across the, the galaxy, you know, or you know, even just in, you know, part of the galaxy, their technology is going to be so far beyond ours. Everything we make is going to be useless. It's going to be antique junk. They're not going to give a rat's butt about any of it. So I could care less about invasions. Any of your invasion theories. I really don't think any aliens are going to invade. We might get like kidnapped and sent off to whatever their zoos are. I think that's kind of the worst we can expect. You know, and, you know, maybe it's already happened. I don't know, personally. I don't think there's any way we could possibly know if it's happened. Like I said, if you've been abducted, leave me alone. I don't want to hear it. But, um, yeah, I mean, when, when you look at the social, you know, social ramifications of aliens landing, compare that to the social ramifications of finding out that dolphins are, are intelligent, not a whole lot different. And dolphins are already here. I mean, we've got a, the chance to study them now. So, you know, considering that uh, an alien contact in the future really is inevitable. We, the sooner we get started, the sooner we learn how to deal with another intelligent species, the much better off we're going to be when that finally does happen. So that way, the first cartoon that I showed you doesn't actually happen. I mean, that would be, that would be pretty bad. Anyway, so great big world, guys. I just want to get you thinking about it.